We are at the verge of a huge revolution, which is at the magnitude of relativity and quantum mechanics at the beginning of the 20th century. Every time that there is in physics two theories which are not compatible with one another, that is the beginning of, of, of the adventure. The debate is not only between scientists and historians or, or philosophers. The debate is within theoretical physics. Yes, special relativity, even general relativity, has been proven uh, uh, in all kinds of experiments. But the collision between uh, quantum mechanics and special and general relativity is just is being as sh sharper and sharper every day. And physics today, theoretical physics today, is still within a great controversy between these two, uh, great clash between these two theories. So here you have experiments in quantum mechanics, which tell you that if two particles are being measured at the same time at different places, something, although not information, is going between them faster than the speed of light at infinite velocity. It's not information, but there is something. This is something which goes against special relativity, even general relativity. There is a problem here, but there, it's much worse. So many in, uh, um, experiments in quantum mechanics tells you that when you make a measurement, you don't affect the particle in the sense that its future moments are being affected. You affect it also backwards, which means something really crazy. It means that it is not only that the future is open, but, but the past is not fixed, at least at the quantum level. We have papers on that. We have experiments which have been proved recently. I, I believe I showed such a paper. I presented such a paper in a conference which you were present. So we are at the verge of a huge revolution, which is at the magnitude of relativity and quantum mechanics at the beginning of the 20th century. There is something very important about uh, scientists being humans, as Jimena says, but the schism is within theoretical physics itself. So many paradoxes which tell you that this picture, nice picture of uh, four dimensions and all events being there is far from being the truth. Let me just give one example and then, then I'll finish. A single photon hits a, a, a half-silvered mirror. You have two detectors here. I made some money with this. One of them is going to give you a click and the other is not going to give you a click. Nothing, nothing, nothing in physics can tell you. My, grand, my scientific grandfather, David Bohm, who was the, father of, uh, who was the uh, advisor of Yakir Aronov, believed in some uh, hidden variables. There are no hidden variables. So here are two events, two possible events in the future, which nothing in the present can tell you which of them will occur. That tells you that the future in some very profound way does not exist. Not only for you and Jimena and me. In some profound way, it does not exist and it is being built. Our world is being built, our universe is adding an event after event in a way which is still a mystery to physics. But there is a lot of physics in it. So can I Please. make, I, I, I want to make a couple points. One is a very simple logical point I hope maybe people can take away from this. This is going back a bit. There's the idea that, well, this event coexists with that event, right? And this event coexists with that event. Again, Newton's point of view, that there's absolute simultaneity, it means you've got all these events, they all happen at exactly the same time. That's what he, he means by coexists. And in that case, coexistence is transitive. It means if A coexists with B and B coexists with C, then A coexists with C, all right? So you can reason uh, along a chain. In special relativity, in general relativity, you don't have absolute simultaneity. You have the past of an event, you have the future, and you have this whole region outside the light cone that's called its space-like separation. But that relation of being at space-like separation is not transitive. A can be at space-like separation from B, B can be at space-like separation from C, but A is not at space-like separation from C. So a lot of everyday reasoning about coexistence goes through. It doesn't go through anymore in relativity if the only thing you have to mean by coexistence is at space-like separation. So you can get very confused about that. The other point is, Avram just asserted there are no hidden variables. I have no idea how he knows that. David Bohm's own theory will give you all the standard predictions of non-relativistic quantum mechanics. Furthermore, the fundamental equations are only solved forward in time. You don't solve them backwards. Now, there's yes, we do. other ideas 
that you can do it both forward and backward at the same time. And, but that theory exists. He knows it exists. He knows it makes all the same predictions as standard quantum mechanics. So I, I have no idea how he can say with such certainty there are no such things. Go ahead. You, you fell um, off on that point. Well, I, I just want, want to, uh, again, sort of try to clarify. I don't think that, that Absalom said that hidden variables don't exist. He said that they haven't been found yet. I, I thought he said they didn't exist, is what I heard. Well, this is... This, <laughs> you know, well, if it was uh, I, objective this is, time... This is at the mystery of... There is a theorem. If there are hidden variables, it's, they should remain hidden forever. Exactly. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, otherwise a special relativity would be violated. So if there is something which remains hidden forever, it, it's metaphysics. It's, it, it belongs more to religion than to science. But I'd like to come to that momentarily. Michio, I'm, I'm aware that you want to make a point, but please... Um, be mindful of the fact that we've gone down a very technical rabbit hole right now. Um, so is, is your point going to be another technical rebuttal, dare I ask? No, I'm going to try to simplify the rabbit hole. Okay. <laughs> I teach physics. I teach both relativity and quantum mechanics. So for those of you who are confused in the audience, there is no scientific debate about special relativity. That's why we know why the sun shines. That's why we have hydrogen bombs. Also, quantum mechanics is well established. That's why we have computers. This conversation, this conversation is possible because of the quantum theory. The problem occurs when we try to unify the two or we try to create analogies to explain the mysteries of quantum mechanics and relativity. That's where the debate comes into the picture because one possibility is a multiverse, but then that raises philosophical questions. I mean, do we exist with carbon copies of ourselves someplace else in another part of the universe? How can we have a multiverse when you think of yourself as being one object? So that's where the debate occurs. The debate occurs when you start to unify the picture given to us by relativity and by the quantum theory, and then you, begin, then you get into these paradoxes. But special relativity by itself and relativity by itself are very well established, almost no scientific debate whatsoever. Mm. So I was, I was going to try and sort of steer us towards, as we reach the absolute end in time of our debate, um, towards a sort of question about whether or not these things can be reconciled or not. But I'm really getting the feeling here that if we can't get to a consensus, it's not going to be possible on what the problems even are, let alone if they exist. Um, a resolution is challenging. So actually, I want to, I want to step back even further right now and ask the question, why do we care about this, Good. right? Like Good. in the genuine sense Good. that we have this feeling of, of what time is, and then there's whatever all the theories of physics do or don't say about reality. So should we care? Does it even matter whether or not there is an absolute time or not? Because my experience of time is my experience of time, surely. Well, here it is. Professor Kaku says that the problems emerge only when you try to integrate quantum mechanics with relativity theory. So what is he saying? Do not try to integrate them. This is what is so beautiful in science, that you integrate different perspectives. I mean, would you, have you said that to the young Einstein, relativity theory would never emerge because you would say to Einstein, you have a problem, you have uh, electromagnetism on the uh, one side, you have Galilean invariance on the, other, uh, on the other side, and you have a problem when you try to integrate them. Don't integrate them, Einstein. Go home and, and there will be no theory of relativity. The problem, the clash, the contradiction between quantum mechanics and relativity, special in general, is as acute and as sharp as the, uh, the contradiction between Galilean invariance and uh, electromagnetism. Every time that there is in physics two theories which are not compatible with one another, that is the beginning of, of, of the adventure. You understand that there is a deeper theory which lies beneath them. And let me tell you, I don't know what the theory will be, but here is my bet, and I can assure you, and Tim and Jimena will agree with me and meet you too. The moment we see that theory, we shall all say, wow, so simple. How could, didn't I think about it before? There is something about these revolutions that is so beautiful, so simple. Uh, Professor Kaku talks a lot about the beauty in the laws of physics. I don't think that the multiverse is very beautiful. Okay, well, we're not here to make, we're not here to make personal comments about people's theories in physics. But, um, 
things that only scientists do amongst themselves. <laughs> Tim. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.